Well, I've just got a couple of video clips I want to share with you guys, and, and I want to ask your <clears throat> input on those. And this first one has to do with the whole subject of, um, uh, of delusion. I, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it's kind of like crazy. Who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? Remember the old cowboy movies? I mean, you build, the, the guy with the white hat was the, and the guy with the black hat was the, and, and now it just seems like, you know, right is wrong, wrong is right. I mean, who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy? In fact, if you watch most movies, the bad guy is the one who you're ultimately cheering for. And we just had Memorial Day. And you know, it's today, June 6th, 80 years ago, 1944, a million people invaded uh, Europe uh, to push Hitler out. And, and Memorial Day is about us celebrating, praise God, those who have made sacrifices for the, fr the freedom of, the, of generations to come after them. And you and I are experiencing that today. And, and there, was a, uh, uh, there was a little poll taken about Memorial Day, who should we celebrate? And it's just fascinating, and I want you two to weigh in on this, about the delusion of the day and how we get farther from the Bible and how we just, our, our, our thinking becomes more and more polluted. Just, just watch this. I'm Zach Sage Fox, and welcome to a Martyrs Memorial Day. Let's celebrate. Do you have respect for our military or? Uh, not really. The military is horrible. The military, no. Yeah. Nah, not really. There's a lot more talk right now about the martyrs of Hamas. Huge respect for them. Really? Do you have more respect for them than our own military? Yes. Nah, America's nasty, honestly. Do you think that on this Memorial Day, we should also be honoring Hamas? Of course. Yeah, definitely. So we should celebrate the Hamas military too? Yeah. The rape that was uncovered on October 7th, they beheaded babies. They GoPro'd a lot of their own murders. No, that's not true. No, I've seen it. Twitter. Yeah, they, hmm. they, they post the um, chopping the heads off. Oh, see, I've I didn't seen know that. Video. I didn't know that. Do you think we should be celebrating the martyrs of Palestine? Yes. Hamas. Yes. Show me things that Hamas has said about Jews in their charter. Article 7, the day of judgment will not come until Muslims fight the Jews, killing the Jews. All Jews everywhere must die. Does that change your thoughts a little bit? Oh, no. I'm wow. You know, As a Jew, that, that's learning, upsetting. I can't speak for Hamas. No, what I just showed you, that's Hamas speaking for Hamas. Wasn't it their land first? I don't know. I, I don't know the history on it personally. don't want to do this interview anymore. I feel like I've proven my point enough. Well, you just said you didn't know anything. People are celebrating their military and they have no love for our own. That's interesting. I'm not going to lie. The U.S. military has a long history of genocide. What about the Hamas's military? Do you think they're <laughs> genocidal? I don't know why it matters. Well, that's our show. God bless America and not Hamas. Well, thank, thank God for all of you who have served in the military and are serving in the military. And for those who have served in the past, praise God. Give them a hand for sure. Amen. You know, I trusted Christ, and it was, I was reading through the Bible, and I'm going through Daniel, Revelation, and America's not mentioned. I'm sitting there thinking, how in the world could this, um, how could America, the world superpower, unravel financially? I mean, we would never let our country dissolve. And yet, as I watch this, this delusion is so great. Is this a spiritual delusion? I mean, how's this, I want you two to weigh in, how's this taking place right before our eyes? I feel like I'm losing my mind when I watch things like this. I think two words. It's called social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where they get educated today, and it's filled with this kind of concepts just like this. Uh, I think this is Isaiah 520, calling evil good. Um, and I think the most stunning I don't know, outcome of the last seven, eight months is the number of people in this world cheering for Hamas. Never thought I'd see that in my entire life cheering for the most barbarian segment of society ever known to man, Mark? Yeah, you know, I, um, I was thinking today, going back uh, five years ago on June 5th, my wife and I, another couple were over in Normandy on the 75th anniversary, and you all know, the reenactments going on there. And of course, we saw these men, they were, you know, very, very old and feeble and frail at the time. Now, you know, the ones that are there are five years older. There's very, very few can make it. But yeah, and, and again, you know, think about our country. I mean, it's, it's you know, Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, well, they gave that last measure of devotion. Um, yeah, the deception that's come along. Um, Jan had mentioned I was an attorney for four years. I worked for a judge at the Court of Criminal Appeals. He was on the Bataan Death March in World War II, a prisoner of the Japanese for three and a half years. And 
you know, you, you think back about in our countries what happened and how far you can come where people, you know, mock our own military, say we've committed genocide and things like that. It's, uh, it's tragic when that happens to a country. But, I, you know, you're talking about how America could fall. I don't know if we could really muster an army nowadays really that's powerful enough to even go fight. Yeah. Uh, really. I mean, I know there are a lot of people who would, but, you know, I mean, how are you going to get a lot of young people today to even have the, the will to go fight and give their life like people did before? So, I mean, I think, you know, you, you asked about how could America unravel, you know, economically these other ways. Well, we are unraveling economically yeah. already. We're $33 trillion in debt and uh, just, you know, just, just keeps going. So, um, you know, unless, unless something dramatic happens in America, you know, we're going down. And really, you know, the only, the only salvation for America is within our churches. And look where our churches are today. Yeah. You know, it's the pulpits of America. That's that's what that's what De Tocqueville you know saw when he came here. It was the it was the churches. It was the pulpits in America. Uh, that that were, it was really the heart and the strength of this country. And it, that, that's that's not there any longer. Tragically and sadly, that's why I'm glad we have pastors like we have here who, who are who are doing that. But that's that's really where I lay a lot of the blame. In fact, there was just an, an article by uh, you can look it up by uh, George Barna about it's called the Inv- Invisible Christians. Christians are invisible. He says that right now, pretty much in America or, or in the near future, the typical American will not know one person who has a biblical worldview. Mm. They will not have one person in their entire mm. circle of influence that doesn't that, that has a biblical worldview. And in the article, if you go on and read it, he lays the blame of, for that primarily at the feet of seminaries in America that aren't training people to to love the Bible and teach the word of God and love Christ. And so you have weak seminaries, you have weak churches, weak pastors, weak people. And so that's where, I mean, it's coming from social media kind of on the outside, but it's coming from, from, you know, I mean, to say some churches are weak is probably not strong, not enough of a statement, apostate. So that, that's what's happening in our country. And so you've got people in our country like these people, that they've never met anybody probably with a Christian worldview. And if, if it is, it's some kind of twisted form of that, they think, so from, from uh, social media. So anyway, that, that's some of, some of what I would say about that. Now, what would, you, what would you say to the family members? Like one of my family members would believe this. And there seems to be a consistency. If I'm for Hamas, I'm automatically against, obviously, the state of Israel, Jewish people, and America. It seems like those three kind of tie mm-hmm. together, even showing there in the video. Mm-hmm. But what would you say to the mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, and it's you know, their 25, 30-year-old, 40-year-old relative, and they think like this. I mean, how, how, what would you say to them? Give them some pastoral advice. How to- well, I mean, first of all, you have to educate yourself. You know, you can't, you have to, you know, when people say America's commit genocide, you know, these people were there first. You know, there's all kinds of, all kinds of information you can read about what happened in the 1940s when Israel came back to their land. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the Arabs were given 187,000 acres of, of good arable land. The Jews had 4,200 acres of land, um, you know, it was divided and that wasn't good enough. Cause again, it's not Israel's size, it's their existence. That's the issue. So right. you need to arm yourself with information about what, what, what's happened in the past. Who are the Palestinians? So this isn't a, this isn't an ethnic group. They're just people who live there. The whole name Palestinian comes from, you know, Hadrian, the emperor Hadrian, the Roman emperor in, in, in 135 changed the name of Israel to Palestina. To, and it was really after the Philistines. It was a, it was, you know, a name that he knew the Jews would hate. And so Israel became known as Palestine. It's Israel in the Bible, you know, where that name came from. And, um, you know, just a lot of the history about what happened in the 40s, what happened in, in the modern state of Israel. So I think if you have good information, if someone will listen, you can sit down with someone and show them what happened when Israel became a nation. And they were, this just didn't come out of nowhere. It was, a UN, it, was, it was sanctioned by the UN. It was a UN partition of land. Right. And, the, and the Arabs have never, never accepted that. They want to go back to pre-67 borders, but in 67, they didn't accept the borders then. Right. So you're going back to borders that still weren't even acceptable at that time. So it's, uh, it's, it's folly. That's the reason the statement from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is the same. I mean, that, that's, it. that's the clarity. And you got to point people back to that all the time.